Hello everybody. Okay, so this is going to be a class about the study of lines, contour lines on a portrait, and we're going to use this angle to learn it. So this is part of my series of portrait drawing for beginners. The reference is taken from Pinterest of a geisha, geisha sakai with parasol in 1905. And I'm also going to talk about how to mix gray, your own gray, instead of using black. Uh, here are some portrait studies that we're going to do. All right, let's get started. So first, I just want to touch on some of the gray color that we're going to mix. We will do this later, but let me just talk about the gray, the neutral gray that you can get from just a blue and a brown. So the two blues that I'm using are cobalt blue, ultramarine, and also the brown I'm using burnt sienna and burnt umber. So here you can see that I mixed burnt sienna and cobalt blue. So cobalt blue is a lot lighter in color, so the gray color is a lot lighter. As you go slightly darker to ultramarine and burnt umber, you will start seeing that it's slightly darker and darker. So the burnt umber will create this slightly darker gray, but you can see there's multiple level of gray that you can create. Some of it has warm tones, and some of it has cooler tones. Here you can see that when I apply those warmer tone, cooler tone into the same drawing, you have different dimensions of gray that are way more beautiful than just using black. So this is our, well, the material that we're going to use is pencils, a pen, and I have thick and thin line pens. And then at some point, we're going to put a little bit of a wash on it. That's the material. So this is the image that we're going to use. First, we're going to start with outlining what is the shape of the structure of the face. So she's slightly angled. So most of the right side of her face is light and then most of the right side, sorry, more the left side of the face is dark. So what I use is Andrew Loomis method or technique, starting with an egg or a circle or a ball. Any of this is fine. Just starting with very rough idea of shape and then putting in a small lure slightly curved um, a smaller egg I would say that is slightly more curved on the right side of her head which will become which is what I'm what I do when I'm trying to look for the ear here I started dividing this particular smaller part into two equal parts going up and down in a circular motion, thinking about the head like an egg and then going kind of like an orbital, there's an orbital line that is actually curved even though it's actually the horizon line. So this is horizontal line in a curved mode going around the head about halfway through this. So there's a quadrant now on this on this head where the back side of the ear here is where the ear is going to be. You can't quite see her ear here, but it is there and this is where it will be. The ear is really, really where, where I usually would look for in terms of drawing a head. I would start with the ear first because the ear will tell you where the jawline is, where the head um, tilting is, where the angle of the face would be going. 
So once I've done this, I'm going to do another curve line about halfway through the face, just like thinking about an invisible line that goes across the center of her face that is slightly curved this way. So that's what I'm doing here. Now this will determine the crossing of the there will determine that the, the right side and the left side of the face. Right, so this is the two halves. You see the right, the left half more than the right half. And then the right half will be the one in the light. Right, once I've done this, I'm going to go back into the ear, bottom part of the ear here to figure out what the nape of the neck is, which is curving slightly this way. Sometimes you can also just use your pencil and work out where the angle is. Right? So this is the rough. You start rough like this. The next thing I'm going to do is try to figure out where her nose ends. So there is an invisible line parallel to the eyes that is orbiting around here, just below the ear, all the way around the front of the face. So that will be where the nose is going to stop. So we start up here and we stop down here. And then just below that would be a thinner and smaller line where the lips is going to be. So I'm just doing a very rough sketch like this. Right, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shade a triangular shape of the nose just to put it there, just to know where it is. So now between the eyes, the top of the ear, and the bottom of the ear is where the nose is. And right here, where the top of the ear is, is roughly where you will put the eyebrow. So before I started doing all the details like eyebrow and eyes, I usually want to figure out where's the eye socket because it's pretty big. So the right eye socket, this side, the one you can see the most, would be this sort of oval shape. I'm simplifying it into this oval shape and then the, the other side is curving around the head right so you can't see all of this it's slightly curving so you can see it's just about half just half of this is visible so I usually do a light shade like this just to place all the different features and then for the mouth what I normally do is this the right the side that you see the most will be slightly longer and then the side you don't see much of is will be slightly stumpier and shorter and that's what that's the shape that I will do it. So once we get this we can just figure out roughly where your eyebrow is gonna be. So your eyebrow, her eyebrow particularly, is quite long and thin just above here and the other one is a lot shorter because it's cut off by the angle so once you've done that you can sort of decide where the eyes is going to be you see that um, this stops up here the eye stops a lot deeper within the face it's not below but it's slightly in right so there's an angle here that I like to put in The front of the eye. So here I'm going to repeat the shape of this sort of um, oval shape but just a lot smaller. So that's what that would be what the, the eyes is going to be. And then the other side of the eyes, uh, once again it's slightly distorted but it is compared to where her eyebrow is going to be is actually slightly Wider, right it's actually slightly more forward here so I'm just distorting the eye shape slightly like that before adding in the pupil which you can only see about two-thirds of 
and then the right side here you can see probably most of it but not all of it as she is sort of gazing to the right and down so that's where I will put her nose. Her nose bridge, so having done all this, you can sort of see where the shadow of the nose is beginning. It begins roughly in the same line as the end of her um, eyebrow. So this is where I will put the line down and then use a little, with a little bit of Taking off some of these helping lines, you can sort of clean up that nose a little bit and get a much cleaner edge. So this is the edge of this, the very soft edge of the bridge of her nose. It comes to here, it goes all the way to the back. And now, between the nostril and the mouth, there is what is called a cupid's bow, which is sort of two somewhat parallel lines that comes down to the lips. So this is where I'm just lightly putting it on there and pressing down a little bit more where the parting of her mouth is as I see it like that. And you can see that the right side of the bottom of her lips here actually is completely hidden. So I will get rid of that. Now, she has a quite a rounded face that comes out into just below the, her lips here. And then it comes out a little bit into her chin. That's what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to connect that whole thing to the bottom of her ear, which is back there, which is here. So if I look at this line that I have now, it probably is not as accurate as it could be so I've just changed it slightly to go up there so if you like you can clean up all these lines now and clean up so now her face is beginning to come out now most of her ear you can't see because there's a lot of hair in here so we're gonna try and figure out where that hairline is going to be if you need to you can just use your pencil and use it as a form of measuring tool, you'd say, right? So from here, the, the tip of the hair is there. That's what I'm doing. So she's got a very poofy hair. And if sometimes what I do is I draw straight lines across different parts of her face just to work out where the end of her hair is. So this is her face. There's lichma space that goes up to here, and then that is where the hair will come out into. Right? And then what I sometimes do is how big or how far is the back of her head here? I sometimes use another pen, just deciding this is the entire feature, it's about this this length. And I go like that. It's a little bit smaller, but about the same distance as this. So it's just double this. So this is mine. I could double it so the hair will be somewhat here. So that's how I figure out where everything is. Now, and then it goes all the way down into her neck, the nape of her neck. And then I'm just going to draw her yukata, the top of her yukata here. And then slowly figure out where her parasol is, which is a straight line like that. So this is so far how it is. And then you can clean up the helping lines now. You don't need that anymore. But I will leave a lot of the shadow in her eyes because we're going to need that later. Mm -hmm. 
So just going back slightly to my drawing, I just wanted to highlight the lines of the shadows on her face that I decided to do. Um, this is what I call the contour of her face because if you look at the the drawing versus the, the photo, the photo is very subtle. There's a lot of very subtle shadows inside here. But to make it a lot easier to start with, I normally just shade all of this and then take out some of these light areas from it afterwards. Here I decided to, to create a line that comes from the top of her head down to her, the tip of her eyebrow, all the way down here, down a lot of this mouth, and then to the chin. So this is all gray scale, gray areas that connects into one. Yep. And then there's only very, very few gray areas on this side of her eyes that you can do much later. So this is pretty important, this side, all the way down to her neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt a slightly different one using all those, the same idea that I was mentioning before. So here, what I normally do is I'll just use lines to gray this whole area face. So what it does is it separates. So I'm using my 2B pencil in a very light way just to cover most of the right side with a very thin grey pencil. This does is it kind of accentuated this side of her face that are very light, and it's a lot easier to see the shadow when you start it this way. So once I do this, you can immediately see the different planes. Yeah. So now I'm going to try and get some of the white area that is just underneath her eye. Just it looks kind of like a triangle goes down into the side of her nose there and then you can also see there's a little bit here that goes inside her chin it's a little bit lighter and this side of her eyes are actually lighter as well so I'm gonna take some of that away and then a sliver of highlight on the top of her eye. I'm gonna get rid of that as well. And then a little bit of this side of the forehead. It's also light. And of course the front of her neck here is light. Right, so once I get that shapes, I'm gonna accentuate a bit more what is left. So this side, top of her eyes, here, the side of her nose is fine. This is almost like there's a shape that goes around like this to her mouth, and then there's kind of like this. So this is the easiest way to very quickly see very, very subtle shadows that was that you probably didn't see before. So once you've done this, we can slowly move on to slightly darker tones around her hair and around her feature. So with this, I'm going to use a fine liner, a 0.1 micron. What I'm going to do here is create tonal values using just contour lines. So what does that mean? Contour lines, let me just 
draw the top of her head. Just the outline first. Like that. Right? So, the way I see her hair in terms of contour is like this. It's starting from the hair growth, which is around her forehead. Right. It will go... It's very poofy, right? So it go... It fans out like that. That is the contour of her hair. There is contour of her face as well, right? And this you can decide whichever you want to do. First, I will just do the most easiest thing is the eyebrow, which I will do just like that. And then I can just draw little diagonal lines inside it. Same thing with the other eyebrow. It's basically this shape. And then I will probably create the outline of her face first into her ear and then you could see a little bit of ear sticking up here. I'll just do it like that. And then the neck, etc. The next thing is the parting of the mouth, which is here, shorter on this side. Remember, remember the small, the idea of the, the center of the face is here. So usually the right side of her mouth would be slightly darker than the right. And then simplifying the shape of this shadow, I will do it like this. Top part like this, connecting that top part to her nose. There is the top of her nose actually comes out, comes back in like that. So this whole part of her nose is actually very light, and then there's a little bit of indication of nostril just slightly off. Okay, now I'm going to go into the eyes, the top lid. And then I'm going to make, to simplify the shape into like this, into a curved line like this. And to which I'm going to also shade just diagonal lines, really. And here, the same thing. And then I'm going to indicate where that white area is that white area is going to be with a line like that. And then as far as the nose is concerned, we can easily just do a straight line that curves slightly at the end. And stopping just there. And then the nostril. I'm going to follow the nostril shape going around like that. That's the contour that I see. Left side, and then I'm going to contour this too. The shadow just under the nose until the edge of the lips. And then here, I'll create this shadow curve into her lips. Here as well. Here I'm going to be doing this curve. So that's the contour of the shadow that I see so far. I'm going to use now as another line down here. So this is something you practice as you if you and trial and error. So this is following the curve of her eyelid and then curving 
around the neck is going to be some shadows as well so that's going to be my shadow so here it's easy to just follow this line in a fan shape and then now I'm going to try and fill the rest of the shadow with contour lines so normally I'll try and do it really big first going around into the eyebrow like this and then I'm going to come out here this is not a science you can play around with the shape that works for you but for me contours of shadows of the face it tends to want to be round it tends to want to be circular and it tends to want to be rounded so that is what I am doing up here you can maybe do a mountain a couple of more notice that it's when you widen all your lines when the white the lines are wide the contours a lot the values are different than when they're more close together so now what you can do is add more lines to the hair as I do like this so every time I do this portrait which, which you know, in terms of practice you can do the same face more more than once you'll start noticing that you just let me just do it slightly different each time so the hair is actually very dark so I'm starting with contour lines going from the center of the hair outwards but I can also create more lines from the top of the head down following basically the same line same contour line into this sort of point so I'm aware that this there's a slight highlight on the side of her hair here so I want to be mindful of that later but right now um, it's okay So you can carry on doing this a little bit more. I think I'm going to add a little more here. Just to add darkness to the parting of the lips slightly. And a couple of lines there. So I'm not going to go over the clothing so much, but you can see that there's actually a lot of texture line going around in her clothing so I'm just gonna mimic that for the moment So here I'm making the lines denser on the towards her face, trying to make the values darker using lines. And then I'm going to do a little more, basically more dense lines. can see when I do that the area gets darker so 
that's I'm gonna stop there and I think back here around her neck there's a lot of shadows that you can proceed with in this way so I'm using a slightly darker Yeah, I don't think I have to explain this too much. You just sort of see what I'm doing here. When I'm doing lines like this all the way around the face, it gives it a nice frame where the hairline is growing from. And it's made it this, this whole part a lot darker. So I'm gonna do the same thing going back from the top of the head, the hair rather down. Leaving quite a few gaps so sometimes it's good to just turn your paper around to make this a lot easier to do remember the natural angle So I'm now going to mix some ultramarine and burnt sienna. So you can do this this way. There's no rules around this really. You just try and just try to mix a nice neutral gray, which I've kind of squeezed out a little bit here, and just adding a little bit of water. And you will see that when there's a lot more brown you will get this kind of brown and you can see that that's actually not grey enough so we need to add a little more blue in this brown and then as you go to a bit more blue it's coming out quite nicely grey if you add a bit more water to this, what you get is this really nice combination of both. So warmer, cooler, and this is the grey we want. The consistency you want for a wash for our geisha is going probably to be thin like this. So once you get that mix that you like, just add a bit more water to that mix so that it's really really quite light and then I'm just gonna concentrate on darkening just first of all the front part of the face the hair and then bits of this will come naturally later but the concentration of the dark will be in those two places so my paper really cannot handle that much water so I really need to just go really light with this which is what I'm doing here 
sometimes it's good to just go in one shot and not have to go over the same area over and over again. So that's the first line. And even just with just, just this, you could see that the, the painting looks has starting to change. And then I'm going to leave the parasol and I'm going to go into the hair. And because it's quite thin and light, I'm going to leave the white parts in the front of the highlights that are, you remember it's there. Because it's quite thin, all my pen lines, make sure your pen, yeah, that's another important thing, make sure your pen that you use is waterproof in order for you to get this sort of etching quality to it. So that's now my hair, leaving a little bit of highlight in the front of the hair. Now, if you add a bit more water to this, it will be really, really light. Then you can start going to the neck and the chin and the knee uh, areas of this face that are actually quite dark. So. I am just basically tinting it now and a little goes a long way because all your lines that you've created it has already basically created most of the value. for watching.